Welcome to the next part on the Pan-European and as you can see it's not dead. So I was stood just over there in front of my desk after the last video. Um, I thought I'd have a quick search on eBay expecting to find 500 quid swing arms and ones in just as bad a state as my own. By some chance moment of luck 160 quid bagged me one that was in considerably better condition. Since then, um, it took a long time to arrive, and when it arrived I threw it straight into a bucket of evapor rust and forgot about it for ages. Since then, in some footage that I lost because I'm trying out a new camera app, I have fixed up any bits and bobs that was missing some tabs that had a, a pinhole in the top of it that um, wasn't bad, it was just a, a small hole in the tube that you can see at the top right there. And I've fixed up the channel that runs along the other side at the back of it, which is normally where it collects water and rusts, and drilled a couple of holes in the bottom. And since then, painted it all back up again, uh, knocked off any rust I could with a flap wheel, so it looks almost mint under the paint, um, and then given it about 8 million coats of thick black hammerite anti-rust paint, and chucked it back on the bike. I'm sorry I didn't get to show you any of that, but um, as I say, I lost some footage and some other stuff was happening in the garage that needed the space, so I just took everything off the bench and uh, chucked it back on here. Not lest having my heating service, which lives in the corner over there, and stuff like that. But the good news is the Pan-European is not dead, um, and here it is. I haven't quite put this back together properly at the back yet. I've got these nuts and bolts loose because there is actually a procedure for what order you put this on in and how you tighten it up in order to get the alignment of this drive unit and the drive shaft and the rear tube correct. The other thing I have done that you might see here is that the um, entire rear brake setup is off. One of the things that it did while it was sat here all in pieces was start gobbing brake fluid out. So I decided to take this caliper off, see what the deal with the rear brakes was. Bit of off camera time, bit of mindfulness on my own. What I discovered in that process was that this rear caliper, which is the bike's original one, I started nicely, I tried to get these pistons out, I moved to heat, I moved to the ultrasonic cleaner, I moved to baking the thing in the oven, um, and I just cannot get this piston out. As you can see, I even went medieval with the idea that I'd replace the piston. And after a couple of hours of that, honestly, um, I went on eBay and found an entire new rear caliper in working order that looks like it's recently been rebuilt, even with brake pads and all the fittings and even the rubber caps, for 30 quid. I realized I was wasting my life, so I bought that and chucked it on. And as you can see, it's still dribbling brake fluid out, but when I press the pedal on the other side, no brake fluid is being moved. I did even take the, uh, God, I can't even see where it is now. Over here, I did even take the unions off the top and pump it, and it wasn't working, so that's coming off, and what we're going to do now is take a look at this and see if it's rebuildable or if it's too far gone. Other things I did was have a quick clean up of this rear shock. Um, I'm not sure whether this is any good, to be honest. Only being able to ride the bike and bounce it will tell, so we might be in for a new one of those. I hope not. They're pretty expensive. And um, every part of this brake assembly is also, except the bits were rubber and obviously cooking in the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, just to try and get some of this years of road grime that's been chucked up melted off. You can see the, the swing arm here as well with its fresh liquor paint on it. It's gotten all dusty, it's been that long since I've worked on this bike. So once I've um, got the brakes on the back sorted, I should be able to button most of this back up and we can move on to the front. So master cylinders are all built different, but fortunately this bike is from the era where a Haynes manual can be found and... The first step of taking this master cylinder out is dislodge the rubber dust boot. Ten minutes later, and I ended up using a pick, and I didn't damage it, but I tried not to use a pick because I thought I'd damage it, and... Ew. Suffice to say, I think this is going to need replacing, rebuilding. Uh, probably with that much rust in there, it's liable to be pitted, so it might just be easier to see if there's a new one available. But um, apparently first we have to get a circlip out, which is in there. Um... Doesn't look like a sir clip to me, so. Excuse my fashionable helper in a yellow Crocs. First things first. Um, plenty of WD-40 and a bit of that. There's apparently a sir clip in here. I think I'm going to need an inspection light and a bit of divine intervention to find that back in a moment. The ends of it are over here, 
Yeah, be right back. The gunge clip is free. Judging by this amount of rust. <laughs> is that just water? I don't think brake master cylinders are supposed to be full of water. Oh, dude. Yep. Yeah, it looks like we'll look on an eBay for another one of these, I think. I think we'll cut this part short here, because um, the garage is nice and tidy. I've got very little done, but at least now you all know that the Pan-European is not going for scrap. Although it is going to be fighting for space on the lift, because um, between you, me, and the entire internet, there might be a big bob kit coming for the Himalayan. So I will see you in another evening's time, when we'll carry on with this, and hopefully we'll have some parts. We'll take this apart and see how bad it is is oh gone before we uh, before we give up let's see how bad it really is okay so the haynes manual said to get that piston out which i can assure you is well and truly corroded in there to apply low pressure compressed air to the top i just tried with 120 psi and nearly blew my eardrums out and it's not coming out so i think we're going to have to go um slightly more medieval look at that nice and easy we won't talk about how much I was smacking the sod out of it while I was off camera. Oh, it's always good when it comes out and you have no idea uh, what order it came out in. You know, that could be worse. The ball looks all right, actually, save for all the rust around it. And I think I might have a honing tool small enough to get in there. We have a sprong. Ah, right, that's what I was beating on the top of. Yeah, probably not for the best. Um, and then we have... A piston with a screw thread shape in it, and that's the face that you could see facing down. And as you can see, that's not as rotten as I thought it would be, but that's probably going to want replacing. I'm going to spec up parts, see what's what, and um, I'll chuck all this sans rubber seals in the ultrasonic cleaner and see what we get out the other side. And on that note, I will go off and have dinner because it's pie and mash, and um, I'm a fat git. I love pie and mash. See you in the next part.